I gotta cool down for a bit because I am hot. And it's not because it's move, it's super crazy, anything like that. It is good, but it's because I just came back uh, from taking my golden retriever, Pookie, for a walk. And I was telling Pookie, I said, man, Pookie, I'm sorry, but we gotta cut this walk short because I got some work to do. We, we got a conversation that we need to have about somebody who the Ravens had just signed. And she was cool with it because she had already took her poop and she also JP peed outside already get it jp peed at the anyway the people that say i'm corny oh they gonna love that one so team keep it clean the ravens oh man rita always says it it's the game within the game ain't negotiation something crazy they ain't the, the mind games that you gotta play when you negotiate ain't it something crazy the words and phrases you gotta use to try to determine what it is that you want and what it is that you hopefully get from whatever side is trying to win so, Jason Pierre-Paul, uh, he had visited with the Ravens a couple of months back. Uh, and again, y'all remember the video? Oh, yeah, oh, I love the vibes in here. It's cool. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing happened. So then, a couple of days ago, Jason Pierre-Paul visited with the Ravens. And he said, hey, it's mutual interest. I'm interested. They're interested. It's mutual. The feelings are mutual. Um, but he said he had left. Said he had left, and, and he said that there were some other teams that were interested in him as well. And when we all got the report that Jason Pierre Paul had left, I was like, ooh. I was thinking, like, there's no way that the Ravens are going to let him leave without a deal. Like, there's no way. I just knew that this deal was going to happen. But then when it didn't happen, I was like, oh, well, that's something. And boy, I remember the comment section from that video. EDC's a fraud. EDC's terrible. Oh, EDC's not a closer. And I mean, there have been some issues with closing recently with the Baltimore Ravens. It's not the same as it used to be, where you just knew if Ravens really wanted somebody, they would get them. But in reference to Jason Pierre Paul, um, a lot of people thought just EDC had failed. Uh, and it it was reasonable to question um, the way that the Ravens and Eric DeCosta and company, the way that they approached this season with the lack of edge guys, with the lack of pass rushers, because it's a passing league and you need to get to the quarterback as best you can. And if you don't have any depth there, that's a problem because you always in the NFL, you always need to think you don't want to do it. You don't want to go through it, but you always need to think worst case scenario. You always need to think about that. What if your starting guys got hurt? Then what? Because you already got guys that are starters that are hurt right now. So you got to think about all that. And it's important to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But the Ravens, they, they've been having to do a lot of getting ready uh, when it comes to the pass rush position. But anyway, uh, with Jason Pierre-Paul, the Haitian sensation, uh, the newest Florida Raven, with him signing Baltimore, uh, what does this mean? This gives them that much more flexibility on defense. And they need it. Like we just talked about a couple of minutes ago, they were lacking so much in the depth department. It, it, it was bad. Um, but now this helps. But think about it. Even with them adding JPP, and they did, did just add uh, Brandon Copeland yesterday. They're still pretty thin. Now, Travis Jones, he's expected to be back. Will this be his uh, NFL regular season debut week? It probably will be. He's been practicing in full, so that's a beautiful thing. Um... But as far as edge guys, they're, they're still pretty thin there, if, if we think about it. So I would assume, all right, JPP, he takes up a roster spot. Unless they sign him to the practice squad, but I, I'm assuming that he's going to be on an active roster. Um, and then they probably, for now, uh, call up Brandon Copeland uh, for this game against the Patriots, just so you have some depth. And they actually, um, they might not even be done. They might not even be done with signings because uh, they still have one more roster spot left. Uh, and literally just 50 seconds ago, uh, Jeremy Fowler, he reported expecting Jason Pierre's Paul deal with the Ravens to include a signing bonus and incentives for playing time sacks to get him well above the minimum. Would have signed earlier, but spent much of offseason getting healthy. OK, that's that's that. Oh, oh, he goes the deal. All right. Um, it is a from Ian Rappaport. It is a one year deal um, worth up to five point five mil up to. That's important. Please remember that. Because I know people are going to freak out. 5.5 mil. What? Are they crazy? They're giving them all that money? Worth up to. Up to. So, um, and, and Ian Rappaport said a rare non-minimum non deal during the season. So, uh, what that means is that with Jason Pierre-Paul, uh, just like Jeremy Fowler explained, if he were to hit all the incentives, 
then he could earn the full 5.5 mil. Now, normally, when these teams create these deals with all these incentives and whatnot, they're worth up to. Usually, a lot of players don't end up hitting those incentives. The teams, they, they create those incentives to, to sort of uh, as extra motivation. Because they're like, hey, if, we, if you hit these incentives, like Jason Pierre-Paul, his, his case, we don't know what the deal is, what the incentives are, but say, for instance, it is based on sacks. If you get 10 sacks this season, then we'll, you'll get an additional two mil. Now, of course, every team, every franchise, they want to keep as much of their money as they possibly can. But in quote-unquote worst-case scenario for them, what if he reached that incentive? Then you got to pay him. But then, again, you think about it, you're benefiting because he reached those incentives. That means he's been playing good. So it's a uh, sort of a, a win-win for the franchise because if he doesn't hit the incentives, hey, we keep our money. <laughs> yeah. But if he does hit it, hey, we don't keep our money, but he helped our franchise out in a major way. So we'll see uh, how it goes. Hopefully he blows his incentives out the water um, and he just really goes off this season. Now, expectations for Jason Pierre-Paul, like um, uh, they just talked about, he spent a lot of this offseason just getting healthy. And that has been an issue for him uh, over the past couple of years. Um, so with Jason Pierre-Paul, I, I don't think it, it would be right for the Ravens, anybody to expect him to be Jason Pierre-Paul of old. I don't think they should expect Giants Jason Pierre-Paul. But um, I, I think you can expect a, a solid contributor, somebody to help out, somebody who knows the game, somebody who got all the experience in the world uh, in the NFL at the pass rushing position, and not just somebody – that's been in the league for a while, but like we talked about when he first visited, well, actually when he second visited, um, somebody who they've had a lot of success in the NFL, and they've literally had success on every single level. They've had the individual success, like, A, you got a bunch of sacks, forced fumbles, all that good stuff, cool, but they've also had the ultimate team success. Hey, you got a Super Bowl. You actually got a couple of them. Okay, even cooler. So it, it was important that you, you never underestimate um, the power of somebody who has great experience. This is not just in football either. That's just in life in general. People who have experience, they can teach you uh, a lot. They can teach you a whole lot of things that you ain't know about. They can put you on game for this, that, and a third. Uh, and they can really help you avoid some stuff too. But it's all up to you to listen. The Ravens have some young and some old pass rushers on this team. So look, they, they, they got Justin Houston. And Justin Houston, throughout his career, he's had a lot of individual success, but he hasn't had the ultimate success yet. He hasn't had it. But he could help, and like he has been teaching Adafi away, teaching Tyus Bowser, eventually Ajabo and whatnot. Jason Pierre-Paul, you just got somebody else who can help do a lot of the same thing. And while it's not his job to coach, you got to know, like, if Ravens paying you, especially if they're paying you a significant amount of money, and especially if you're an older player, I think that there will be an expectation there that you would uh, help. And I'm sure they ask about that in all their meetings and whatnot, uh, in all their negotiations. Wonder what happened to those other teams, right? Remember that? Remember? Remember? Wonder what happened to those other teams that were interested in Jason Pierre Paul. Again, you, you got to try to make yourself look like a hot commodity. And I, I get it. I get, I get the business side, and I always appreciate the business side so much. That's why I love talking about it. Um, you got to make yourself look like a hot commodity. Like, hey, even though it's going into week three and ain't nobody signing me, hey, it's some other people that talk to me. It's some other people that hit me up. It's some other people that's interested. And if you're the Ravens, um, it all depends on how, how you look at that. See, it, it's like, like if it's a guy and he's trying to talk to this girl. And the girl's like, ah, well, I'm, 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 talking to, I'm talking to these guys, other guys too. They're interested in me too. Depending on the guy's, uh, depending on his personality, he could be like, uh, either, ah, uh, yeah, maybe she's not the one for me. Because she's talking to all them other guys, too. They hitting her up. Ah, uh, no, nah, she's getting too much attention. Or somebody else could be like, you know what? These other guys, they hitting her up. You know what? No, I need to step my game up. And let me show her why they shouldn't even matter, that I'm the one that she should choose. So with the Ravens and Eric DaCosta, it seemed as if Jason Pierre-Paul told him, hey, these other teams, they hit me up. What you going to do? And by the way that things went with Jason Pierre-Paul having left, it seemed like maybe Eric DaCosta gave him sort of a nonchalant sort of approach. Like, okay, all right, whatever. 
Oh, you, you want to talk to them? Well, go ahead, talk to them. Enjoy your conversation. You, you know my number, but enjoy your conversation. We're going to go in another direction. We got uh, Brandon Copeland. So EDC actually flipped the script and like, hey, no, you were talking to some other people? Oh, we talking to somebody else too. And we actually making a move on them. So it's possible that Jason Pierre Paul saw that and said, oh, hold up. They don't want me no more? And then maybe they reconnected and something. I, I don't know. That could have possibly been it. That could possibly be wrong. But bottom line, none of that even matters anymore because the Ravens have closed this deal um, as originally expected. They just wanted to stress out some Ravens fans for a little extra day because they, they like trolling us sometimes. They, they love doing that. But it is official. Jason Pierre Paul is a Baltimore Raven. Who got number 90? Ain't that a Jabo's number? So I wonder what number he's going to Oh, please. I hope it ain't no ugly number. But you know what? If it's an ugly number, as long as it ain't ugly production. So anyway, like Jason Pierre Paul told the Baltimore Ravens after their first and second visit, I'm out. But he did end up coming back, so I guess he really wasn't out for too long. So welcome home, JPP.